Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates. The solution of the director of IBC, the bond. Are you happy mind to have a solution on the NBC Act? The chairman of bond. Sorry, many of us that are written here, your name here. Uh, I'm not really sure whether you, you are talking about NBC Act or you want to make some mention in all the five things. Okay. The phone also, you want to make a submission on it? Ah, okay. Let's start from the other thing. received by the Commission in the integration account in accordance with Section 162 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and for related matters. Mr. Chairman, this is a very short, uh, this is rather a very short uh, bill uh, and the essence of which is that all funds of the Commission which we have described consisting of uh, such funds as budgetary allocation, trust funds, subventions, grants in aid, and loans as made from time to time be made by the federal government as such, such sums of property which made from time to time by way of loans or grants and gifts accrue to the commission from any other government other means, other money, that all this money should not be paid to the uh, Treasury single account. This is the purpose of this bill. But, but uh, 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 Mr. Chairman, sir, honorable members, we have a problem with this because this seems not to be in line with the thinking of the executive that very soon the NBC would uh, exit uh, the, the number of parastatus that um, whose salaries are paid by the federal government. In other words, very soon, MBC will have to be, will need to be paying its own salaries and will have to pay for all its overheads and all its um, uh, operations. Okay, so if that is the way the executive is thinking, then it will be a, a, a drawback if we now pay everything into the treasury, treasury single account. It means then that the government then will have to pay our salaries and pay all our needs. And uh, th this will defeat the objective of the federal, federal government that setting para status should contribute more to the revenue of government. Uh, so uh, if you don't mind, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think I need to reconcile this position with the Honorable Minister of Finance uh, before we can proceed on this matter. But otherwise, we'll have no problem. Because right now, sir, the practice is that 30% of whatever we generate will retain and then 70% is paid to the 
central bank. But with the 2020, I think it's uh, with the 2020, uh, I don't know whether it's midterm or whatever, we've been, we've been giving notice that probably as from next year, we'll need to be self-sufficient. And we are no longer to be, we, we, we won't enjoy the privilege of our salaries being paid by government. We have to fend for ourselves. So this is why I feel a bit uh, uncomfortable. I mean, I feel it's, uh, there's this area that I think we need to, to, to look into. Are you done? Okay. Okay. We have done. Uh, a lot of effort has been put into this uh, uh, amendment uh, bill. Uh, and I'm talking here about uh, <coughs> the one, I think it's. Uh, I think um, I see for yes, this is the is the bill to sorry, sorry, okay. I think it's I I'm talking sir, but uh, a bill for an act to amend the National Broadcasting Commission. 2010 and related and related matters, which is to be found at the pages 2687 to 2721 of the National Assembly Journal. Uh, it has been, I think, a lot of work has gone into this and it's quite comprehensive, but uh, I just need to make a few observations. Uh, uh, the first uh, has to do with uh, Section 1R of the proposed... So, sorry, Honorable Bosa, do you have any submission to the committee? Or you don't have any submission? No, I, I, I have talking points for this. You don't... Not no, but at the end of my submission, I, I, I would give you a written... Uh, oh, hold on. Yes, sir. I'll give you a written at the end, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Sir, um, if you look at uh, what is being proposed, Section 1R. It, it, it talks about. Uh, it, it actually starts with one A object of the Act. And it says, what, it starts with a contribution to democracy, safeguard, enrich, and strengthen. I believe, sir, that uh, we, uh, then it ends with uh, regulate, regulate and provide digital broadcasting in Nigeria in line with international telecommunication union agreement referred to as GEO Six twenty thousand and six in a manner that will be cost effective for Nigeria. Uh, with due respect, Mr. Chairman, sir, our law cannot be subservient to the International Telecoms Union Treaty. It is true, sir, that we are part of the treaty, but our laws and acts cannot be made subservient to any treaty. Uh, uh, treaties are made, but our laws will have to reflect the particular and peculiar situations of our country. So, Mr. Chairman, members of the House, uh, I would suggest that uh, we look into that uh, uh, to, 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 my, to my view on this. Then, Mr. Chairman, sir, when you go to Section 2C, Section 2, the new Section 2C, it, it talks about, um, it says we, should receive, we can receive, the Commission can receive, process and consider applications 
for the establishment of establishment ownership and operation of radio and television stations, <coughs> including Roman Figure One, cable television services, direct satellite brokers, direct to home, IPTV, radio and digital terrestrial television. I, I do want to add here, Mr. Chairman, sir, members of the House specifically, that internet broadcasting and all online media should be included with this. Because we have responsibilities to monitor content. Including Twitter. Including Twitter. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <coughs> Mr. Chairman, sir, if I can move quickly to the, sex, the proposed section nine. Section nine, sir. The new section nine, sir. It, it talks about, I think it's, it talks about classification of licenses. Mr. Chairman, here, the proposed amendment says that the Commission shall, on such terms and conditions as may in any case determine, issue an applicant with any of the following categories of licenses. A. Broadcast service license, which includes television, radio and mobile broadcasting license with the authority to produce contents and b signal distribution license with the authority to provide the transmission <coughs> platform for broadcasters and c any other license as may be determined by the commission it goes for that to say signal distribution license granted after the commencement of the act shall be first granted to the Nigerian Television Authority, being the existing national information carrier, existing digital terrestrial operators who have the infrastructure for digital distribution, and any other two private digital distributors. Uh, with due respect, Mr. Chairman and Member of the House, uh, this section deals with classification of licenses. It cannot delve into who shall give licenses. The power to give licenses is regulated by the law, by the courts, and by the various regulations. But if a law a priori tells us who should be granted licenses, then it's not, since then it's not classification. There are very exhaustive and comprehensive protocol as to what you can do to get, what you need to do to get a license. So you are recommending? I'm recommending, sir, that uh, the ed we do not make specific, sir. Should delete. Yes, you don't make specific those that. Sir, you can, you, I agree with the classification, sir. But uh, even those who enjoy it now, the government has the right to revoke them if they. <coughs> yes. So uh, I, I would say, that I would please uh, uh, very respectfully say that I would delete uh, the section that talks about. Uh, NTA, existing digital territory operators, or any other tools. References, sir, if you also go to 99. 
he, he talks about uh, sorry, sorry. I, I cannot, uh, uh, but I'll read it outside. You see, sir, the, the, I think the section nine, where it talks about um, spectrums belonging to companies that have been granted um, licenses at this such. I think it's under powers to grant license. Powers to grant licenses, uh, I want to say, sir. Power to grant licenses. So my submission there, Mr. Chairman, sir, is that spectrum, sir, do not belong to licensees, sir. Spectrums, spectrum belongs to the federal government. And I can use it either for broadcasting, use it for telecoms, or use it for any other thing. A situation, sir, where you will give the impression, section 9A, yes, sir, where the impression will be given that uh, those who today are enjoying the spectrum will enjoy it forever. No, sir. E -e 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 Spectrums, at any given time, the, the, the federal government might decide who to give the, the spectrum to. And we must be careful that we do not give permanently a spectrum to foreign companies who might decide to do whatever they want to do with it. It is our hope that when we eventually uh, you know, uh, trans transit from analog to digital, that the spectrum that is left will not be sold by the federal government to fund developmental programs as they may wish. But a situation where impression is given, sir, that um, a particular yes, I think it's uh, it's nine A, nine A, sir. It's a broadcast service license. It includes television, radio, and two. With the authority, I think it's. Yeah, 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 I think it's still. Uh, it's, it's under the broad classification of 9A. Okay. I, I yes, sir, but I just want to. For, when I'm submitting my written report, sir, I would definitely get the. Yes, yes, that's what I'm sorry. I say, sir. There's a provision in the amended law here that asks that, spec that those who are today enjoying spectrum will continue to enjoy the spectrum. And I say, that's not that. That is like saying, uh, it's like taking away the power of the federal government to allocate spectrum for what it wants to be. Spectrum, sir, uh, that's, that's why we call them licensees. When we give you a spectrum to operate from, sir, you hold it as long as you abide by the laws, you know, surrounding the grant. Any time that the government you, you, you violate it or the government needs that spectrum, you don't you, it it will withdraw it from you. As a matter of fact, you, you don't need to make you don't need to offend. Like you remember that uh, uh, the some cable operators, we took away their licenses, we located them elsewhere because the government, the government priority. It might be security, it might be economy. But I will, please, further, I will, I will, I would, uh... I think, Honorable Speaker, I'm yes, sir. <laughs> Honorable Minister. It's uh, A, it's A to, it's A to, I think it's nine. Uh, in as much Z. In as, in as much we will not uh, consider the oral submission as the key. The submission, written submission, is very, very key. So please, just make the submission on. I will, sir. Uh -huh. So let's be waiting for that. Yes. Then I, I want to suggest that, because we are considering two 
bill. I mean, three bills today. Anybody who are given the opportunity to speak, I think, colleagues, we can be speaking on the three bills or your submission on the three bills, so that we will not be going back front and back on them. If it is accepted by the whole also, do we agree to that? No. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, sir, just, I will just brief your hand up on this one, sir. I've got, I'll give you a written oh, that's so, that's Section 19, sir. Uh, the the competition, under the this, if you look at Section 19, sir. Yeah. So that it is better for everyone to be submitting. Uh, with this, with the competition rules, sir. Uh, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it, uh, the Section 19A, sir, talks about competition. No, sir. sir, competition rules are in the code of the MBC, sir. That is where we spell out, you know, things that have to do with competition. And then 19B, sir, the cross ownership. If you read it very well, sir, it, it smacks like a witch hunting. Uh, when we say, if I, if I own this television station, I own, I own this radio station, or this uh, newspaper. I cannot own this. But what makes it a bit obnoxious, with due respect, is the fact that immediately after this law is passed, they are going to now have an, uh, an inquiry into those who are already holding it to look as if it is which one. But I'm, I intend to put all this in our perspective in my write So those are the few, uh, you know, um, those are the few observations have, have made, except that, that also in uh, section six, uh, uh, section two, so under the past of the commission, it appears as if there's a bit of confusion. When you said the, the under 2A, powers of the commission, that the commission shall have the following responsibilities postponed to this act. The, to formulate the formulation of policies monitoring of the broker sector, issue directions of a great, of a general character, and matters of broadcast national policy concerned with the objective of national security and economic development. Uh, it's a bit um, uh, misleading, because if it's doing to me, it's as if you have taken away the powers of the minister who can give general directive, but you did not touch it. You did not touch the power of the, you did not touch the power of the minister under section six. But uh, it, it, there's a bit of uh, ambiguity on the kind of directives. The commission can give directives probably to the licenses, but only the minister has the power to give directives of the general nature to the commission, which must be obeyed by the commission. Thank you very much. I'll put all this in writing. You're welcome. Yes. You want to make some decision on time? Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dear colleagues, I think I would suggest that uh, instead of taking the three bills at the same time, we can set time. Maybe one, two hours. If we know those who have submitted on a particular bill, they raise their hands. You call them, Mr. Chairman. We allow them. Then we do others immediately after. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, you are concur with the Honorable mm. Minister's submission. Yes. Von, do you, DG Von, do you have any submission here? Your name is, please sit down, sit down first. Uh, let's go according to this, the, the submission of this. Uh, broadcasting of the election of Nigeria. Are you here? Are they here? Okay. Ratau. 
Right away. Do you have submission on NBC Act? Okay, please go ahead for your presentation. Okay. Uh, where is this man? Is there any map here? Confirm it. Is it there? Yes, yes. It's not there. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. So please make use of your seat before we can ratify that before we can change it. No, I know that I will have permission. But I will make use of your seat, my Okay. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, other members, stakeholders, members of the press, good afternoon. Can, can you can you do it in the next one minute or two minutes? Yes. <laughs> but okay. So, so go well, as as I know, submit it, sir. Just adopt all the protocols and go straight to your. Okay. okay. So our section and our proposition on the other side are submitted. Now section four, subsection one, says recommending application through the minister, the president, for the grant of radio and television licenses. Now on the other hand, our provisions. Our proposition of Atau is that if the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria finds credible individuals who are appointed into the board of the commission, it will only be appropriate that both be allowed to grant approval of licenses on behalf of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Such licenses so approved shall be communicated to the president periodically through the office of the Honorable Minister, the office of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is so busy that bothering it further with issuing approvals for licenses will not be too appropriate. That's a proposition on that. Section 7 of Section 6 says, shall ensure compliance with all directives from the Minister of Information relating generally to particular matters with regard to the exercise by the Commission of its functions under this Act. A proposition on that. Ratau is concerned that this provision will ultimately lead to strangulation of the Commission if it is compelled to comply with all ministerial directives and necessary political sentiments and influence could only could be used by the Minister to undercover the Commission. Section 13, subsection 3 says, where an application for the board for the grant of license for radio and television stations satisfies the conditions stipulated by the Commission for such a recommend application to the President for approval through the Minister. A proposition shared that the town is of the view that the board should grant approvals, not the President, considering how busy the President can be waiting for this approval will take a longer time than necessary. Can you, can you please tell the house who is born? Sir? Born. Oh, the board. Oh, oh, oh. The board. Yes. We are part of the board of the commission. Tell us the food, the food meaning. Yeah. So that everybody can be in the same page. Yes. You said? The commission board. The commission board. The commission board. The commission, NBC commission board. NBC commission board. All right, all right, all right. So I can now understand. So we are part of the board. Now, section, section section 5B says, Imprisonment for a term no less than one year says both such fine and imprisonment. Ratao finds these punitive measures as anachronistic and, and can be manipulated to deal with opposition or radio and television stations that permit dissenting voices. Thus, the union recommends that B and C should be deleted. Television licenses piece, section, television licenses piece of section one says, collect and hold in trust for B, disbursed on behalf of the broadcast houses, such a licenses fee accruing from ownership of radio and tele, radio and television states as the commissions may prescribe. A proposition here, sir, NBC or Bond be empowered to collect such fees as local government has no business whatsoever in broadcasting. The percentage accruable to both government and the broadcast media in Nigeria be worked out. Anyone who collects or attempts to collect such fees should be punished. This will help NBC to have unhindered access to the funds for its operation. So, 
So, so this is the, the first segment of our proposition. We have a section to general uh, observation. Digitalization has brought about coverage in the broadcast industry, convergence. Therefore, NBC and other related bodies, such as Nigeria Communications Commission, NCC, must find ways of handling the challenges that come with convergence in the broadcast industry. Two, the current act of NBC came into life in 1992 and was revised in 1999. It will appear clearly that the birth and the revised edition of the act happened during the military region. Thus, it seems to have dictatorial tendencies that the military are known with. Therefore, purging, the, purging such out will make the expected act more democratic. I think you are done with the major or something. These are general. These are general. Uh, which you have, uh, since you have, you have, we have your document. Yes, sir. Thank so you, sir. We can That's take note of that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> this is challenging. Yeah, okay. Is I will simply go to the recommendations, the prayers there. Um, the gaps that we have uh, recognized are actually gaps having to do with the independence of the regulator in this act. All over the world, the international standard is that the broadcasting regulator should stand as an independent entity, recognizing law as such, able to perform all the functions of a regulator. And that is not happening in Nigeria, and this law has not made such provisions. I'll simply quickly go into um, the issues that go with independence, the recommendations. Uh, recommendation one, sir. Section 21B should provide for the commission the power to approve licenses without reference to other government organs, while Section 21C should be removed. 21B is the one that says the MBC should just be a post office, just to collect uh, applications and, and not do anything. 2C, 21C is the one that says uh, the minister and the, uh, Mr. President you know, should uh, do the approval. So we are saying that one should be removed. The regulatory body should have the power to issue licenses. Number two, sir. In section three, the board members should be properly designated as commissioners Representatives of the State Security Service and the Ministry of Information should be excluded from membership of the board. Members of the board should be appointed by the president upon consultation with the groups that they represent and confirmation by the National Assembly. You must just have this oversight. Executive cannot be doing this alone. The appointment dates of the board members should be staggered so that you know, they are there all the time. The membership of the board should include women, youth, and persons with disability, and ineligibility criteria for membership should be specified. Recommendation three. In section four, the law should provide a five-year term, not three, for, and, well, for one renewable term after that, for the board members, five years, maximum two times. Specify conditions for possible removal of members, outline a removal process which includes fair hearing and the participation of the board, the presidency, and the National Assembly. Recommendation four, sir. The provision in the first schedule of the act which allows the participation of ineligible persons in the board's proceedings should be removed. Recommendation five. On the appointment of director general, section five, should be amended to provide that the DG shall be appointed by the president upon consultation with broadcast industry stakeholders and confirmation by the National Assembly. His or her tenure shall be five years renewable for one further term. Ineligibility criteria for the office should be specified. The process of removal from the office should involve the president, the board, and the National Assembly. Hmm? And include fair hearing. Now, recommendation six, the power to give directives to the commission vested in the Minister of Information is an anachronism. That power given in section six, an anachronism should be removed and replaced with powers for the minister, which include policy formulation for the broadcasting sector, the negotiation of international agreements, 
notifying the commission of the policy director of government and ensuring that the independence of the commission is protected at all times. Recommendation so, seven, they should be strengthened. That is, section seven should be strengthened by providing for review of the remunerations and allowances payable to the start of the ABC. Recommendation eight, some new provisions should be added to the existing ones in section nine, which deals with the commission's power on granting of licenses. These are that, one, the commission should periodically publish its licensing process, provide regular feedback to licensed applicants, specify situations that could warrant license denial, ensure transparency and full independence of the regulator if taking decision on revocation of license, review the template of application form for license, and create space for appeal of regulatory decisions. Number nine, the inclusion of the following, you know, there is a particular section you know, that deals with classification of licenses. And we are saying during this recommendation, the inclusion of the following among the categories of blockages services licenses will be injurious to civic space. We can see what has been happening in the past few weeks. And I'm happy, you know, that the House of Representatives has said, tried to weigh in on that as well. Freedom of expression and media freedom in Nigeria. Hmm? The inclusion of this IPTV, yes, among the, the classes of licenses, it lists IPTV, IP radio, EPG, online news related services, internet broadcasting website, over the top television, and any other class of license as may be determined by the commission. They should be removed. This will be enemies, this will be legal, legal ground, you know, for the executive to close the civil space in this country. Number 10, exercising regulatory power of sanctions over a license up to three times during a five-year period should not be enough ground to refuse license renewal. Hence, the new section 13A2B in the bill should be removed. The penalty for failure to make license renewal application six months to license expiration is too harsh. Hence, Section 13A4 of the bill should be reviewed. Then, the, this bill the talks of uh, returning expired licenses. Why return an expired license? An expired license is a dead license. Hence, Section 13B of the bill should be removed. Section 14 should be amended to provide a government appropriation to the NBC. Hmm? should be through the first line charge. Section 15 should be amended to provide that the collection of review and TV licenses could be outsourced, that's the collection, by the commission. And the proceeds should be distributed by NBC to broadcasters in the public, private, commercial, and community subsectors and other players which have emerged in the digital transition period. Additionally, Section 1B of the fourth section for the schedule of the Constitution should be amended to remove the hands of local governments from the collection of the fees. The next one, the provision of this digital access fund in the bill. Very interesting. Thank you very much, you know, for uh, providing elaborately uh, for that. Should be reviewed as follows. The membership of the Board of Trustees should include representatives of industry groups such as BON, NUJ, Ratawu, ETC, and marginalized groups such as women, youth, and people with disability. B, the sharing formula for the profits of the Digital Access Fund should be removed. Why am I saying, why are we saying so? And be left for administrative level decision making because there are issues there. He says 40% to signal distributors, 10% to NTA, 10% to FRCN. 40% to NBC, and the two questions that arise are this. What happens to all the state-level broadcasters? State. State governments also have radio and TV stations. What happens? Would they be share of this? All the private uh, commercial broadcasters, all the community broadcasters, who, which number hundreds and generate content, what, what happens to them? Then secondly, which is very important, the data on, uh, on uh, TV households, it's not stable yet. We won't know what will happen later. So it's better left out of legislation uh, uh, for, to, for administrative level. I'm rounding up now. The participation of the National Assembly should be prioritized in the borrowing arrangements articulated in Section 18. They leave out the, the, the legislature and all of this. Please ensure 
that the participation of the National Assembly is prioritized in the borrowing agreement, borrowing powers of the Commission, articulated in Section 18, as well as in the budgeting process provided for in Section 19. Where the possibility of concurrent jurisdiction between NBC and other agencies is created, the law should provide for cooperation mechanisms. What are we saying? There's competition, there's consumer issues. But we know that there is Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission. So there is therefore concurrent jurisdiction. The law should go further to provide for cooperative mechanism between these agencies so that there won't be problem in implementation. Informing the public of plan to conduct public inquiry by NBC should be done through media that have extensive nationwide reach. Hence, Section 19E4 of the bill should be reviewed to include the publishing of notice of public inquiries through such media as newspapers, radio, and television with national circulation and coverage. See what you did for this. I saw it in many national newspapers. I saw about the public hearing on radio and television. It was everywhere, banners all over the place. And you can see the quality of participation today. All right. In addition to annual reports provided for in Section 20 of the Act, the Commission should prepare periodic reports, submit to the Presidency and the National Assembly, and disseminate to the public. Currently, the law says submit to the Minister of Information. And this is a public organization. It should be transparent. It should be accountable to the public. All right. Then finally, the provision in Section 23 that gives room for the Minister to participate in making of regulations there's another problem, apart from Section 6, Section 23, says the minister, you know, should have power uh, to make input, to approve regulations, you know, like the code and all of that. That is also, you know, another uh, door, you know, into interference. So we are saying the provision in Section 23 that gives room for the minister to participate in the making of regulations by the commission is a tool of political interference. It should be removed. Distinguished, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, distinguished, uh, the honorables, uh, honorable minister, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. My name is Akin Akin Gulu. I'm the executive director of the Institute for Media and Society. Uh, we are very passionate, you know, about public policy in the area, in the communication and media sector. And uh, we will be glad if we will consider the uh, proposal that we have put before you. Thank you for the great work that you have done in the Thank field. You. Thank you very much for your attention. Details, Nigeria Limited. Okay. Is Olala the four for worry? Is head compliance uh, details Nigeria Limited? Uh, details Nigeria Limited uh, welcomes the opportunity to uh, contribute to uh, the process of uh, the passage of this bill by the National Assembly. Uh, we have uh, submitted our submission by a letter dated 11th of uh, June. Uh, we forwarded our submission to the. Uh, to the chairman uh, of this honorable committee, and we wish to adopt uh, all uh, submissions made in our in, uh, in that document as our submission for this uh, for the purposes of consideration of this bill and for this public hearing. But I, I just want to highlight on one uh, issue. I, I won't take your time, like the last gentleman. So I, I, I want to um, talk about the uh, MBC Amendment Bill HB 833, uh, which uh, seeks to regulate. Um, tariff and subscription policies of uh, satellite digital uh, television services. So uh, uh, for us details, uh, we think uh, that uh, bill is not um, in conformity with uh, the way uh, the market uh, operates in terms of the market forces. For us, we think prices of uh, t television services uh, should not be regulated by, should not be subject of regulation uh, for these following reasons. So, uh, digital television services are not universal services like uh, the public broadcasting services or telecom services, which are public utilities, which need to have universal access for everybody. They are just discretionary services which people or consumers buy based on a the contract they enter into with uh, the service providers. So these contracts are what regulates those relationships. And those contracts should not be subject of uh, um, uh, uh, legislation. Uh, regulation because they should be, both uh, parties should be given the free will or space to operate within those con contracts.
So, uh, so that is why we wish to submit that uh, the market forces should be the best mechanism for regulating uh, tariffs and subscription policies for uh, satellite, digital satellite services. And, and also for us, the regulation will not be in the interest of uh, uh, consumers and with data investment for the following reasons. For if you try to regulate, uh, the, services, the service providers will then try to cut short in terms of quality and number of uh, uh, content they're producing, which in the eventual uh, uh, space, in the vent uh, which eventually boil down on, uh, bear down on the consumer because they now have low quality services and lesser content to contend with. So th that, that is why, uh, and that will also still full uh, future innovation because if your income is not guaranteed and is subject to regulation, you will not want to uh, invest more in something that has that, that, quite some, a little bit of uncertainty. So honorable chairman, uh, this is where I want to stop so as to save the time of the uh, committee to take other consideration. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you. I want to commend um, Dr. Kingolu of Imerso, and I will also want to adopt um, his, his, his submission. I think the, the, the process of very wide-ranging stakeholder consultations, and I, I want to um, commend, um, not only commend them, but also adopt it as part of my submission as well. Um, I do have, however, one point that I, I think that is important that I, that I uh, sort of touch on. Um, and that is the point that, uh, just to illustrate the dynamics of r regulation, um, I think certain things should be left within the code um, so that we're not too fixated with laid down laws. Because if you look at um, how much time it's taking us to, to review this act itself, um, it shows that we need to stick to regulatory instruments um, with, within the code. Um, and as part of that is also to to state within this legislation the need for standardized rulemaking procedures that the commission should take with regards to the code. So that, you know, there are certain rulemaking procedures, you know, you declare public, so that we state it one by one, leading to how the code or any other rulemaking um, is adopted by the commission. I think it needs to be well stated. So that if the commission is going outside of that, then we know, uh, we as stakeholders in the industry know that. Um, the Commission is going outside of that. Um, on the licensing of DSB, Digital Satellite Broadcasting Services, I also want to say that I agree with the proposal made in this Act uh, that um, certain bodies that were precluded before should be, um, should be removed. Now, this is, this is important because within the licensing of services, um, there are digital services. It's not like analog that we're using um, you're already licensing the, dig the, the digital signal distributors who are responsible for the, for the signals. Now, channels themselves will come and go. So if we adopt a more strenuous process where they have to go to the, all the way to the president, to the minister, it becomes very difficult. I think the NBC should have the, the wherewithal and the process that is known by everyone, national assembly stakeholders, in which they um, go through the checks of saying we've authorized or we've licensed uh, a channel, because in the digital space, channels come and go uh, very fast, and I think it's important that I just touch on that. But having said that, um, I think, again, I want to um, stand by the submission by Meso and um, thank this honorable, uh, honorable chairman, members of this distinguished committee for the time. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Mr. Chairman, honorable members. Uh, the minister here present, uh, let me stand on the existing uh, protocol. Um, my name is Ata Guba. I'm a private legal practitioner. I'm an expert in competition and consumer protection law by virtue of my experience over 17 years. My concern here is with great competition in um, the broadcasting industry. These powers have already been granted to the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission by virtue of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Act, which gives that 
um, Commission the exclusive remit to deal in matters relating to competition. For instance, Section 104 of that law says that in all matters to deal with competition, the provisions of that law will override the provisions of any other law except the Constitution. So why do we want to make laws now that are already overridden by a law that has been passed by this same National Assembly? Um, the second point I would like to uh, talk about is about price regulation. Price regulation would be relevant in a regime where um, there's government subsidy so that participants in that industry will be able to recover um, um, their expenses. Digital TV is entertainment services. And the pricing there is a very, very, very complex gamut. People who are in that industry are very, very price sensitive. Because if you fix a price that is too high, subscribers will unsubscribe or not subscribe at all. Secondly, if you put a price that is too low, um, uh, participants in that industry will not be able to meet their bills, they will quit or cut corners. At the end of the day, who suffers? It is the consumer that suffers because the quality, quantity, and variety of service that is necessary will be absent. Finally, I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to participate in this effort to strengthen the regulatory capacity of the National Broadcasting Commission. Thank you very much. I'm sure you have put your submission to the committee. Yes. We have a memorandum okay. which we adopt. Thank you. Okay, Jeff. Beautiful. Commissioner Law Advocacy is here. Mr. Richard Akinola. Our memorandum touches four areas, and I will just speak to the recommendations, uh, some of which align with the submission already made by the Institute for Media and Society. The first is on the independence and the licensing process. And the point I just want to raise as the issue here is that uh, unlike other regulatory institutions, such as the National Communications Commission, uh, the appointment of the board, uh, including the DG of uh, the NBC, is not subject to the confirmation of the National Assembly. Uh, we think this should not be the case. Uh, for us in the media, we take note of the fact that uh, the NBC in recent times has taken actions against uh, broadcast media that we believe are politically motivated, uh, including the imposition of FT fines. And that is why we think that uh, this amendment should help to promote the independence of the NBC. Uh, the specifics of our recommendations, which align with uh, that of IMS, includes uh, the fact that uh, the act should be amended in such a way that the constitution of the board, just like others, is done through a process that involves the confirmation of the National Assembly. Then section two, functions of the commission. Uh, section 2C of the amendment bill, we propose that should now read, receive, that is functions of the commission, process and consider and approve applications for the establishment, ownership and operation of radio and televisions. And then section nine, which is with power to grant licenses, permits, authorization, should be similarly amended to read as follows. That is nine three, where an application for the grant of a license for radio and television station satisfies the conditions stipulated by the commission for such grants, the commission shall make the approval. And that's the, so the last recommendation there aligns with the fact that uh, this act should be amended in such a way that the funding of the NBC is through the first line of charge, so that it's not tied to the apron string of uh, the Ministry of Information and Culture for funding and survival. 
The second part of our memorandum is on industry sensitive pricing system. We are happy that uh, the objectives of this act as captured by this uh, honorable house in FG and H uh, includes the fact that it shall encourage investments and promote diversity in the control of broadcasting services, promote fair competition, ensure fairness in service delivery, and so on. But then, uh, 22F of this act, as proposed, of this bill rather, says the commission shall have the reserved sole right to oversee the implementation of this process without any interference. Uh, we object to this on the grounds that uh, this will be like a usurpation of the functions of the Federal Competition and Consumer, Consumer Protection Commission, uh, FCCPC Act, the act already exists, uh, which in a well-considered view already has adequate provisions to deal with the often contentious issue of competition and pricing. And then secondly, the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission Act is indeed more technically equipped to handle the kind of matters being doubled to in here being a specialized agency established for that specific uh, purpose. And so we feel that uh, given the MBC, the sole right over tariff issues which cannot be interfered with could be interpreted as an abstract clause that arrogates to rate arbitrary powers that cannot even be challenged in the law court. So our recommendation in this regard is that the two subsections highlighted above should be removed from the proposed amendment bill of the National Broadcasting Act. The third is on promotion of inclusivity, uh, which has to do with the issues of uh, women and so on. In this uh, amendment bill, sir, uh, section three, under functions of the commission, does not adequately capture this, because what it provides for is as follows. The commission shall take such steps and enter such arrangements as may appear to read to encourage the protection of children with disabilities, the elderly, the disadvantage and those on low incomes. Uh, the pressure here is that it's only children that live with disabilities. So we are recommending that the above should be rewarded as follows. Three, the commission shall take such steps and enter such arrangements as appear to read to encourage the protection of children, youths, women, Thank you. people living with disabilities, the elderly, the low income, and Thank so on. You. Finally, Mr. Chairman, I know I've run out of time. Uh, the last part is just a point, sir. With this, with uh, prevention of uh, uh, arbitrariness, we are proposing that uh, uh, the NBC, uh, the National Broadcasting Act, should provide for the right of appeal to the board where sanctions applicable for alleged breach of the Nigeria Broadcasting Code could include hefty fines, suspension, or withdrawal of license. Under the current arrangement, uh, the NBC, as often is the case, is the accuser, uh, the prosecutor, and the judge in its own case. And we think that this stands against uh, the principles of democracy. I thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you. I want to make a request to the Honorable Committee, sir, that they should consider a seat on the NBC Government Council for advertising that represent the income. The going concern of broadcast media houses depends on advertising. And we felt as a strategic partner in this whole conversation, advertising should be represented in the ecosystem. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. VOA. Colleagues, uh, DGs of Parastatos, gentlemen of the press. I adopt all the protocols, please. Uh, please, our own is simple appeal. So may I, on behalf of the Voice of Nigeria management and staff, appeal that we are included in the digital access fee because we were omitted, briefly, especially when our sister agencies, the Nigerian Television Authority and the Federal Radio Corporation, were handsomely captured and obliged 10%. We are appealing, because we are supposed to be the BBC of Nigeria, the Voice of, Nigeria, uh, Voice of America of Nigeria, and then we are trying to upgrade our services to compete favorably with our colleagues. And by law, we are not allowed to generate funds or, place ad or collect advance. So it will not be fair if uh, a child is not treated like the other children. So we humbly appeal that we are included and uh, allocated 10% as uh, our sister agencies. 
Okay. Mr. Osito Ketubu, Director General Voice of Nigeria. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. For the submission on the, the next bid, you can make your brief submission of this previous one. As Council of Nigeria, we can only regulate partitioners. However, until our law is changed to advertising regulatory council of Nigeria, meaning that as of today, if somebody is practicing advertising and is not registered or licensed by APCO, we don't have, and that is one of the reasons why we have all those tradomedical adverts outside there, why we have some old ad, I mean, adverts there that we cannot regulate. Anytime we do, they just go to court and we are always at the back end. So we kindly request the consideration that our law, the intro, the preamble, and the name of our law should be reviewed to Advertising Regulatory Council of Nigeria as held by the, as decided by the Court of Appeal. Also, sir, we also want to make an appeal that the function and mandates of APCON should be looked into. There is a shift in advertising spent from traditional media to social media. It is not like the advertising industry budget is growing, but there's a shift in digital media. As it stands today, any attempt for APCOM to go into the digital media to say we are supposed to regulate what you are exposing, we always have the issue of your mandate did not cover that area. So you cannot go into that area. Most of the people that we have not been allowed, we have not been, we have not allowed to practice advertising on the traditional media. Some of them have also moved to the uh, digital media. We also want to appeal to the committee, sir, to also consider the creation of advertising practitioners' offences uh, tribunal. This, we believe, is going to strengthen the uh, uh, implementation of some of this uh, uh, our mandate. For example, if we have the Advertising Offenses Tribunal, most of the issue uh, arising from disputes, sanction, and all these things will be taken to this. We currently have APDC, Advertising Professional Disciplinary Committee, which is more like a machinery within the APCON Governing Council. If we have this tribunal, it's going to help us in sanitizing the advertising industry. I would not want to take much time of the committee, sir. Uh, the other issues raised in our memo have already been included in our submission to the Honorable Committee. Thank you very much, sir. When the presentation you of the Nigerian Union of Journalists, sorry. That space is there, you can only refer to the existing provisions. But our proposition here reads, Section 11, Retail suggests that students of, students of advertising and other related disciplines should be added at the first part. Section 12, subsection 1, D, Retail is of the view that age 21 should be changed to age 18, which gives people independence and legal recognition as contained the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Section 13, going by the advice of the Bureau of Labor Statistics, Ratau recommends that those to be absorbed must have a degree in advertising, communications, marketing, graphic and designs and arts. Section 15, subsection 2, Ratau observes that the unions operating in the advertisements and the advertisement industry are missing. Therefore, it is recommended that they be included. So, sir, this is our submission, and when you go down, you'll find our general observations as you please. Thank you. For taking up what we consider a very laudable effort at improving the laws that govern advertising in our country, a very important sector which we think has uh, not enjoyed the kind of attention it should. Uh, we already have submitted a memor memorandum to you, which will adopt largely. But just to add here that uh, the name change recommendation as made by the APCON registrar is something also that we wish to adopt at this time, considering how it continues to impact on the operations of the advertising industry in Nigeria. Uh, part of what has perhaps uh, impacted negatively on our sector 
is the fact that uh, quacks, if I might call them that, can go to court and get away with not being uh, regulated simply because the laws sound as if they are not part of the regulation. So I think this is very central to this very laudable thing that you're doing here. So since I have only 30 seconds, thank you very much. Because the triple AN that just spoke, the Media Independent Practitioners Association of Nigeria, yes, we did. Those, the, the, the name that is, yes, is actually who we are. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. First, I would like to stand on all existing protocol, um, but I must recognize your excellency. Thank you, honorable chairman, for this opportunity. The advertising industry has evolved, first from the word advertising. Today, it's about marketing communications. So the HASG, which I represent as chairman, is made up of six sectoral groups. One is the AAAN, two is the X-Man, that's the Experiential Marketing Agencies, three is the Media Independent Practitioners Association of Nigeria, four is the Out of Home Advertising Agencies of Nigeria, three, uh, five is ADVAN, the Advertisers Association of Nigeria, and then finally BON, Broadcasting Association of Nigeria. The six of us form the HSG. First, I would like to credit the work that is being done, uh, Honorable Chairman, and your committee. Um, our position is in three areas, and I'll just, because of time, go straight to it. First is on the composition of the APCON Governing Council. And our recommendation is simple. We account for the advertising revenue expenditure production in Nigeria. And we as the key practitioners and professionals in this industry must be or should be represented on the body, on the council. Currently only triple AN out of the six agencies are represented on the governing council. And we do propose that this should change going forward. The second is related to, our second point is related to, okay. to section one, under subsection one and one C, and this refers to advertising practitioners. Our recommendation is there is need for clarity on who the advertising practitioner is. And in our submission, we made a, propos a proposal. The practitioner is everyone that is involved in the planning, creation, development, placement, exposure, measurement, monitoring of advertising and marketing communication. It needs to be defined on the bill, on the act, rather. And then finally, sir, um, the registrar spoke about the penalty, and we do subscribe and support the position of the, of the APCON registrar on the composition, on the penalties. Uh, what, we, what we just only want to add to that is that first, there should be a warning or a fine uh, to the tune of 500,000, and then a second warning, which could then lead to, sub to convictions as recommended by the APCON registrar. These three key points are positioned, but let me just, in rounding up, emphasize the importance of recognizing the six sectoral bodies that make up the advertising industry in Nigeria. Currently, only triple N is recognized, and that needs to change. Thank you so much, Chairman. We appreciate what you are doing because this is going to really enhance public participation in your role as people that are enacting laws that govern the way we do things. Secondly, with regards to the NBC court, I would like to concur almost 100% by what has been suggested by this gentleman. I've forgotten his name, but uh, I think we need to look at really the, imp the 
independence of National Broadcasting Commission is very critical because it is an agency that is supposed to package who we are and how we are as a people. Therefore, content, that is the programming that we churn out in our broadcast systems, is very critical to shaping how we want Nigerians to be viewed by the outside world. So the more independence is that is granted to the National Broadcasting Commission, I am sure, the better it will be for the country. And the less politicking in the system of either processing or uh, approving licenses, the better, because we need that agency to be bipartisan. Whoever is a Nigerian should be a part and parcel of the project of MBC. And we think if we achieve this in the process of the law that you are trying to enact to govern how things are done, it will be better for this country. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. The next person. Your distinguished creative colleagues, we are here together. Well, three of us are here. I'm sure uh, the other person, Mr. Madhu Sishikwendu, will soon be uh, introduced to to step forward. I agree uh, everything. I adopt what uh, most senior Alaji Abdul Karim just said. Uh, our concern, because uh, we are critical stakeholder in the entire ecosystem of uh, the MBC, our concern is how to. Uh, it's an appeal uh, that as we are reviewing this law, uh, how Nollywood, as an industry, uh, a very viable industry can be dragged into the net of beneficiary of uh, some of these, uh, the collection of some of these revenues. I believe uh, uh, my colleague too, Mr. Madhu Sishukwendu, will speak more on this because so that we won't repeat ourselves. Uh, if we give him a privilege. Yes, uh, I, believe, <laughs> I, I believe he's listed. I appeal for that that he should be given the privilege, Mr. Chairman, sir. Actually, we are looking forward uh, more to the one that is more relevant to us, which I suspect will be tomorrow, which is the <laughs> National Film and Video Census Board. That is the one that is uh, more relevant to us, and we look forward to uh, making our own contribution to that. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Mr. Amadou. Honorable Vision, Public Policy and Culture. First, I we had planned to speak as a group, so that's why my colleagues were taken by surprise, so we had made our uh, decisions together. We in Nollywood want to be recognized as genuine and major stakeholders in the broadcast sector. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Most of this, because for instance, this amendment is a bit of a surprise to us. We stumbled on it. All right, and I would have loved to speak as eloquently as my older brother here. Unfortunately, one does not even have these documents to look at. So I think that first and foremost, the National Assembly should make it a statute that before any institution or organization is, is making a review of the extant laws, they should provide evidence that the stakeholders have been notified. So we have a situation where it looks as if people are going behind to do Jankara laws and beg to National Assembly <laughs> for endorsement. The stakeholders need to know. Secondly, back to my original point, if you look at information on viewership, you will see that Nollywood movies contribute a huge chunk of the viewership of these broadcast stations. Why do you want to treat us like those who view skyscrapers and they don't end up living or working there? These access fees, we should get a part of it. This radio and TV license, we should get a part of you. Mind you, sir, the original thinking, because collection of those radio and TV license is domiciled in the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And the thinking of the original drafters was for the ease of collection. All right? Because we cannot, I don't know how NBC will manage to go to every village to collect uh, 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 licenses. But the principle is excellent. What is more important, sir, is the warehousing of the monies and the distribution of these monies. It is sad and unfortunate that the local government simply treat this money as additional uh, uh, internally generated revenue, which is not the case. Because if you look at the model for this radio TV license, which is United Kingdom, this radio TV license is used to is flowed back for production, to encourage local production, production that will encourage our national unity and other uh, uh, ideological situations. Also, now, please excuse me. Okay. Yes. Okay, so, so finally, sir. 
All right. Uh, they switched my paper. <laughs> Thank you very much. So please, it's very important to us to take note of this. And then, like I said, the, yeah, very important. Now, there's an issue that's been recurring here. The issue of MBC's demand to, 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 to determine subscription fees. I want us to be mindful of the fact that this is not an arbitrary decision by the National Broadcasting Commission. It is a response to the yearnings and aspirations of millions of Nigerians who have been serially exploited over the years by some of these cable TV stations. So it is very important to take note of this fact. So it should not even be revisited. MBC should have the right to determine the subscription fees the same way they determine ab initio license fees. If people are saying that we should leave it to Federal Consumer Regulatory Agency, where were they now when the agents were being exploited? It means very clearly that this Consumer Protection Agency has failed, for whatever reason that we don't know, in fairly determining what Nigerians pay for the use of cable TV. We know for a fact, I don't need to, all of us know for a fact, what obtains in other jurisdictions like South Africa and other countries. Just for us to be mindful of that fact that NBC did not take that decision alone. It was they were reacting to what Nigerians want. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak as short notice. Three bills before you for uh, review. In the first instance, <laughs> I'm restricting myself because of time to only one. Um, in the NBC bill, under the objective of the act, uh, the, it says that it should provide a clear allocation of rules and assignment of tax between policy implementation. I think that should change to uh, what you have there on the law is policy formulation. Policy formulation is in the ambit of the ministry and the office of the minister. The implementation is for the agency. So that clarification should be made. Under scope of the act, page 2690, uh, line 6, they were talking about recommending application through the minister for the grant of all for the grant of radio and television licenses. That is, limit, is very limiting. The authority of the NBC to grant licenses covers all categories of broadcast licenses, including broadcasting through the internet. So that, that point should be also made. Uh, under section three, I'm suggesting that they delete public sector. It is provided in there, they made public sector. Uh, this, if you include, if you delete public sector, it will remove the limitation and have general application. I also have some proposition regarding the functions of the uh, National Broadcasting Commission. In the law establishing the NCC, for instance, there's provision for it about management of the National Frequency Management Council, for which the NBC is a member. There is no such provision in the NBC Act to ensure that the frequency that is meant for broadcasting is properly uh, taken care of. I have therefore proposed here that uh,